Hi guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna tell you that how soft drinks affect women's bone health. Please continue to watch this video up to the end for full detail. A recent study has identified an association between consuming two soft drinks per day and an increased risk of hip fracture in postmenopausal women because the study authors cannot prove causation. However, they call for more research. Osteoarthritis, which is characterized by progressively weak and brittle bones, predominantly affects older adults. As Western populations age, therefore the incidence of osteoporosis rises in step. The condition affects around 200 million pupil tested sores worldwide. As a person's bone mineral density becomes reduced, the risk of fractures increases. In fact, according to the authors of the most recent study paper, globally, an osteoporotic fracture occurs every 3 seconds. Although some of the primary risk factors for osteoporosis are unalterable, such as age and sex, some lifestyle habits also play a part. For instance, alcohol consumption and tobacco use both increase the risk. Nutrition may also play a role with researchers particularly interested in calcium intake. One recent study in the journal Menopause focused on the impact of consuming soft drinks. Here are three points to explain this topic. Number one, why soda not good for bones? A number of older studies have observed a link between consuming soft drinks and reduced bone mineral density in teenage girls trusted source and young women trusted source. However, other studies that specifically looked for an association between soda and osteoporosis have not identified trusted source, a significant relationship. One study found links trusted source between cola intake and osteoporosis but did not see the same effect in relation to other sodas. Because of these discrepancies, the authors of the latest paper set out to study the links between soft drinks and bone mineral density in the spine and hip. They also looked for a relationship between soda intake and the risk of hip fracture over a 16-year follow-up period. Number 2. Investigation of Scientists To investigate, the scientists took data from the Women's Health Initiative. This is an ongoing national study that involves 1,61,808 postmenopausal women for the new analysis. The researchers used data from 72,342 of these participants. As part of the study, the participants provided detailed health information and questionnaire data outlining lifestyle factors including diet. Importantly, the diet questionnaire included questions about their intakes of caffeinated and caffeine-free soft drinks. Number 3. What did they find? During their analysis, the scientists accounted for a range of variables with the potential to impact the results including age, ethnicity, education level, family income, body mass index, use of hormonal therapy and oral contraceptives, coffee intake and history of falls as expected they did observe a relationship between soda consumption and osteoporosis related injury. The authors write. The researchers explained that association was only statistically significant for caffeine-free sodas which produced a 32% increase in risk. Although the pattern was similar for caffeinated sodas, it did not reach statistical significance. For clarity, the percentages above display relative risk, not absolute risk. The study authors reiterate that the significant link was only present when comparing the women who drink the most soda, at least two drinks per day, with those who drink none. This they explain suggests a threshold effect rather than a dose response relationship.